a long and bitter battle, but tonight we know J.D. Vance will be the Republican on the ballot for U.S. Senate. He won former President Donald Trump's coveted endorsement just weeks ago. Since then, many Ohioans have said that, in fact, swayed their vote. Here's a look at the numbers. The Trump endorsed J.D. Vance is out front ahead of second and third place candidates Josh Mandel and Matt Dolan. Mike Gibbons and Jane Timken in fourth and fifth place. Good evening, everyone. I'm Colleen Marshall. Hello to you. I'm Kerry Charles. A reminder running across the bottom of your screen are election results from all of today's races. Now, this Senate seat will replace retiring Republican Senator Rob Portman. We want to take you to Cincinnati tonight. That's where NBC4's Alan Henry is with J.D. Vance and his supporters. Alan. Well, Kerry Colleen, as you mentioned at the top of the show there, this was a long and bitter battle. J.D. Vance knows that especially and wasted no time calling for unity in the Republican Party because he knows he's going to need all the support he can to win this seat in the fall. Now, earlier tonight, the mood behind me here was one of celebration. Vance came out to roaring applause, first thanking his wife, then his campaign team, followed by former President Donald Trump for his endorsement just a few weeks ago, which may have been the key factor in Vance's win. Now, Vance has been pulling from the Trump playbook, labeling himself as the type of conservative outsider taking on the establishment and declared victory against the established white right wing tonight. But he also called for that unity because if you just look at the numbers, about 66% of voters today right now picked someone else. Now Vance thanked the other candidates in the race and promised to earn their supporters votes to take on Tim Ryan this fall. We are going to do battle against an establishment left that thinks that people's jobs, that think that people's values, that think that people's basic livelihoods and sense of dignity in their own country is not something worth protecting. That is the battle we're about to fight, ladies and gentlemen, and this is the team I want to go fight it with me. Thank you. And Vance wasted no time attacking Tim Ryan tonight, calling him a Trump Democrat. He also reminded the crowd here of the current 50-50 split in the United States Senate, knowing that this seat could be crucial to the future of the Senate and the country. Local for you in Cincinnati, Alan Henry, NBC4. Alan, thank you. And we also heard tonight from Josh Mandel. He finished second behind J.D. Vance. Mandel ran his campaign on the assumption he would be Trump's pick for Senate. Take a listen to part of his concession speech. I uh, just called J.D. to congratulate him on a hard-fought victory. I look forward to voting for him in November and doing what I can to help him beat Tim Ryan. The uh, stakes are too high for this country uh, to uh, not support the nominee. You heard it there. In November, Congressman Tim Ryan will be on the ballot for the Democrats. He beat out Morgan Harper and Tracy Johnson. Now, to many, this result, it is not a surprise. NBC 4's Karina Chung in Columbus tonight with Tim Ryan and his supporters. Karina? Colleen, Tim Ryan says that the fight starts now and he's forging ahead with his platform for the general election in November. Now in his speech earlier tonight, he highlighted his continued dedication to the middle class. Ryan spoke about making Ohio and the rest of the United States an economic powerhouse, specifically about boosting manufacturing and energy. He says he wants the U.S. to outpace other countries like China and that can be done if everyone works together. Ryan says the time to heal is now and he wants to represent everyone, Republican, Democrat and independent. What are the most important things that we need to do in this state and country to build the middle class, to give people some breathing room? And uh, that's what I'm going to fight like hell for. Ryan also commented on the Republican side of the race, saying the Trump endorsement didn't hold as much influence as many people thought it would. He says Matt Dolan got a lot of the vote, and he expects those voters to join his camp, saying that Matt Dolan voters do not have a lot in common with J.D. Vance. Local for you in Columbus, I'm Karina Chung, NBC4. Karina, thank you. And again, it's the race to fill the seat to be vacated by the retiring Republican Rob Portman in November, you will see Democrat Tim Ryan facing Republican J.D. Vance. Governor Mike DeWine and his Lieutenant Governor John Husted are headed back to the November ballot. They took 47% of the vote, while challenger Jim Renacci finished second with 27%. NBC4's Jamie Ostroff spoke with the governor, the Lieutenant Governor as well, after they claimed victory at a campaign watch party. Jamie joins us live tonight from Grandview. What do you say? 
Well, Carrie, the governor and the lieutenant governor just bested three sets of primary challengers in today's election, running on a very traditional promises kept type of platform. When Governor DeWine took the stage here at campaign headquarters this evening at around 840, he talked about his administration's law enforcement grants and his plans to build an intel plant in central Ohio, as well as his stance against abortion. Headed into the general election, he promised voters he would work to prevent drug trafficking over the country's southern border and increase mental health resources here in Ohio. As he is set to face Democrat Nan Whaley in November, Democrats say a fractured Republican Party bruised the incumbent in this race. However, DeWine is optimistic about uniting his party. Well, I think that there's big differences between Republicans and Democrats in this election, and they'll be you know, outlined as we go forward. Um, look, this has been a, a conservative administration. This has been an administration that has kept its promises. This has been an administration that is moving Ohio forward. Standing by DeWine's side, Lieutenant Governor John Houston pointed out they won their primary in 2018 by a smaller margin than they did this time around. Local for you in Grandview, Jamie Ostroff, NBC4. Jamie, thank you. On the ballot against DeWine in November, former Dayton Mayor Nan Whaley. She got nearly double the votes compared to challenger John Cranley tonight, a historic night. This is the first time a woman has been nominated for governor on a major party ticket in Ohio. NBC4's Eric Halperin is in Dayton tonight at Whaley's watch party. Eric, this was not close, a surprise to a lot of people. Colleen, as soon as the first numbers came out tonight, Whaley was up big and it has stayed that way throughout the entire night. At last check, she was up about 30 points. The race called around 9 o'clock tonight. When the two-term Dayton mayor took the stage here at the Montgomery County Democratic headquarters for her acceptance speech, she was greeted by a big crowd, all applauding and holding their campaign signs. She quickly pointed out the history she made tonight and said she wanted every little girl watching to know what she did is possible. She thanked her primary opponent, John Cranley, on a hard-fought race, saying she genuinely appreciates his ideas and plans. She says she's looking forward to working with him over the next six months, and he says he will be supporting her. Folks moved here because Ohio was building the future, a state of innovation and creativity, of inventors and astronauts. But today, a small group of politicians and corporate lobbyists are standing in the way. They're more interested in holding on to power than making sure the future is built in Ohio again. I don't know about you, but I'm ready for a change. A few uh, minutes ago, I called my friend Nan Whaley, congratulated her on her decisive victory, and wished her best of luck in November uh, with my support. She ran a great campaign um, and is a very good person. And throughout her speech tonight, Whaley also pointed out several differences between herself and Governor Mike DeWine and talked about why she thinks she would be the better governor. Local for you in Dayton, I'm Eric Halpern, NBC4. And we are going to hear a lot about those differences in the months ahead. Here again, a look at this race as we move toward the general election in November. Democrat Nan Whaley will try to again unseat Republican Governor Mike DeWine, who is seeking his second term in office.